Donald Trump bullies the press and protesters, appears to have wildly problematic corruption and conflict of interest issues, and has made a plethora of sexist and bigoted statements. Obama expanded the drone program, continued the war on terror, and failed to fight for a public option. George W. Bush caused the Great Recession, started the war on terror, and while he was warned about 9-11 more than a month in advance, he took no action to prevent it. If the most recent presidents of the United States see him as especially vicious, dim, or corrupt, let me assure you that there is no golden age in the past to look back upon. While not all presidents are created equal, they all have pretty hideous failings. In this video, I'm going to give you a taste of the ugly side of every president in history. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. You're going to be proud of your president. Tear down this wall. Ask not what your country can do for you. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. The leader of Al-Qaeda. Read my lips. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. George Washington was perhaps one of the least qualified presidents in American history. He grew up in a family of wealthy tobacco farmers who owned slaves, which he inherited and profited from. While a fine military leader, he had little in the way of political experience, and the role of the presidency was largely shaped around his own skill set, which was mainly military, hence the title Commander-in-Chief. As a war hero and founder, he was shielded from criticism during his own time and ever since. He failed to support Republican forces in revolutionary France, responded to a handful of frontier rioters with an army of 15,000 men, and his economic policies consistently favored the wealthy elites, people like himself. John Adams had an obvious contempt for freedom of speech, regularly fining or imprisoning Americans for speaking out against their government. He even arrested and imprisoned a congressman for criticizing the president in a private letter. Thomas Jefferson was one of the most successful presidents in US history. He was also a major slave owner. He criticized slavery in his writing, but owned about 600 of them. And when a slave rebellion threw off French colonial rule in Haiti, Jefferson's response was to embargo that country. While Haiti's capital of Port-au-Prince was once known as the Paris of the New World, the country fell into deep poverty as a result of Jefferson's embargo, and today remains one of the poorest countries in the world. James Madison did not adequately prepare the military for the War of 1812, even though he was the guy who pushed for it, which is why the war is also known as Madison's War. The war accomplished little for the United States, but provided British forces the opportunity to occupy Washington and set both the Capitol building and the White House on fire. James Monroe got very little done considering the fact that his only opposition, the Federalist Party, was already fading away by the time of his presidency. His solution for the slavery issue was the Missouri Compromise, which drew a line between free and slave states. He claimed that the compromise had saved the Union, but in reality he was just setting the stage for the Civil War. As Secretary of State, John Quincy Adams authored the Monroe Doctrine, claiming all of North and South America to be part of the sphere of influence of the United States. While you may have seen it as a measure against colonialism at the time, it was soon to be used as a rationale for near constant intervention in Latin American politics, including the overthrow of even democratically elected governments. Andrew Jackson forcibly removed tens of thousands of Native Americans from their homes. Those who resisted were met with hostility resulting in slaughter and the Second Seminola War. Martin Van Buren's incompetence is widely credited for the economic depression following the Panic of 1837. William Henry Harrison delivered the longest inaugural address in American history, on a cold rainy day, wearing no coat or hat, and rode in on horseback rather than a closed carriage. The oldest president ever elected at the time, he promptly caught pneumonia and died. John Tyler was never elected president and seemed to have a great deal of disdain for democracy. He was nearly impeached after vetoing absurd numbers of bills in defiance of the custom that presidents should only veto what they deem unconstitutional. He then focused on annexing the Republic of Texas, which a decade prior was officially part of Mexican territory. Polk completed the annexation of Texas, thereby completing the theft of Mexican land, which triggered the Mexican-American War of 1848. He was an aggressive expansionist, not just of US territory, but also of presidential powers. Like George Washington, Zachary Taylor had military experience but no political experience before becoming president. As such, he accomplished little, aside from being the last president to own slaves. 
Millard Fillmore signed the Fugitive Slave Act into law, which required citizens of free states to return escaped slaves to their masters. He also joined the deeply anti-Catholic, anti-immigrant, know-nothing party. Franklin Pierce broke with Monroe's Missouri Compromise to support the even more controversial Kansas-Nebraska Act, which allowed for the expansion of slavery into the West. He also tried but failed to annex Cuba. James Buchanan was a doughface, a northerner with southern sympathies. Toward the end of his presidency, many of the states that would become the Confederacy seceded from the Union. While credited with freeing the slaves, that oversimplification ignores the role of abolitionist groups such as the Quakers and the very real role blacks had in emancipating themselves. Lincoln repeatedly said he believed in white supremacy and early on in the war didn't allow his generals to free slaves in captured territories. In point of fact, he didn't believe that freed slaves could or should one day become full American citizens. Andrew Johnson opposed federally guaranteed rights for African Americans. Ulysses S. Grant was a great general, but not a great president. He ushered in the Gilded Age, and his close associates were constantly steeped in scandal. Hayes pushed for the assimilation of Native Americans into white culture, crushed a railroad strike with federal troops, and despite serving as president, no one today knows who the hell this guy is. Like William Henry Harrison, Garfield died before getting much of anything done. Chester A. Arthur was widely admired by contemporaries like Mark Twain, but has been largely forgotten over time, possibly because he never achieved anything of note. Grover Cleveland oversaw a suffering economy and cracked down on unions. Benjamin Harrison was notorious for wasting government funds. His policies toward Native Americans were hostile to say the least. He oversaw the bloody battle of Wounded Knee against the Sioux and tried to annex Hawaii. William McKinley actually annexed Hawaii. He supported imperialism even in his presidential campaign and seized Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines after the Spanish-American War rather than freeing them. Teddy Roosevelt was obsessed with his own image and masculinity. He joined the Rough Riders to invade Cuba to show just how tough he was, then spent his presidency pushing around Congress and Latin American republics alike. He also dishonorably discharged 170 black GIs after they were shot by white racist townies. Fat. Not enough? He was also expected to follow in the footsteps of his mentor Teddy Roosevelt, but deviated from Roosevelt's policies so extremely that the Rough Rider left the Republican Party to form a new one. During Taft's presidency, the progressive wing of the Republican Party split off to join the Democrats mainly because of the Bollinger controversy. Supported eugenics. Perhaps the most corrupt president in history, the most prominent of his scandals was the Teapot Dome scandal, in which members of Harding's administration were caught taking bribes from private corporations to lease oil reserves in Wyoming. Failed to act during the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927, then helped to build the economic policies that created the Great Depression and the 1929 stock market crash. Herbert Hoover failed to recover the economy during the Great Depression and supported Prohibition. One of the greatest presidents in American history, FDR, is not without his faults either. He married a distant blood relative and proceeded to have several extramarital affairs. Also, there were the Japanese internment camps. Truman was the first and only human being in history to order the dropping of nuclear weapons on civilians. He also contributed more than any other president to the building of an American empire and started the Korean War. Eisenhower started the Vietnam War, threatened to use nuclear weapons to end the Korean War, and developed plans to blow up the moon. He also authorized the CIA to take out the democratically elected leader of Iran and install the Shah, creating a lasting rift between Iran and the United States. Failed to get out of Vietnam, tried and failed to overthrow Fidel Castro, recklessly threatened to use nuclear weapons to deal with the Cuban Missile Crisis, and humiliated the First Lady with near-constant philandering a total failure when it came to the war in Vietnam. This one's obvious, right? Elected to end the war in Vietnam, but before doing that, proceeded to expand the fighting into two other countries. There was Watergate, the Southern Strategy, and the legitimation and empowerment of Henry Kissinger, one of the worst human beings to ever walk the earth. Although never made to stand trial, the two almost certainly committed more war crimes than you could name. Gerald Ford is well known to be a failed president, what is little known about him is his role in aiding the invasion of East Timor, which involved multiple incidents of indiscriminate mass slaughter and rape of civilians, including children. One of the most underestimated presidents in modern history, but it's fair to say he bungled the Iran hostage crisis and could have done a lot more to prevent the 1979 energy crisis. Perhaps no president in history contributed more to widening the gap between rich and poor. 
If that doesn't do it for you, Google Iran-Contra affair. Promised emphatically not to raise taxes before raising taxes. Monica Lewinsky is just the tip of the iceberg. Bill Clinton has been accused of all sorts of sexual shenanigans ranging from consensual affairs to sexual harassment, even flat out rape. If you don't want to count that against him until it's proven in a court of law, fair enough. He also repealed Glass-Steagall, which more than anything else led to the 2008 stock market crash and Great Recession. While on a month-long vacation, George W. Bush was told that Osama bin Laden was determined to attack within the United States, but reportedly told the CIA agent who briefed him, all right, you've covered your ass now. A month later, he was reading to children when he was told that the nation was under attack. He then waited in seven minutes of stunned silence. What followed was a never-ending war on terror, fruitless invasions of two countries, Guantanamo Bay, drone strikes, a failure to respond to Hurricane Katrina, and the Great Recession. Obama was ushered into the presidency on a campaign of hope and change, which won advertising awards. His response to Wall Street shenanigans was massive bailouts and the Dodd-Frank spill, a milquetoast regulatory measure that has failed to prevent the banks from getting even bigger now than when they were too big to fail. He then signed into law his signature Obamacare bill, which went into effect with no public option and accompanied by a website that didn't work. Rather than shut down the controversial drone program, he expanded it, using signature strikes, which is killing people when we don't even know who they are, and double taps, which is bombing the same spot twice, killing first responders and good Samaritans. Only days into his presidency, Donald Trump was already approving the Keystone XL and Dakota pipelines, using cable TV as a policy advisor, calling CNN fake news, dubbing his Mar-a-Lago resort the Winter White House while doubling the cost of membership, and failing to put his considerable assets in an actual blind trust. While on the campaign trail he promised to drain the swamp, in office he is rapidly becoming one of the greatest purveyors of corruption in Washington, and may one day rank among Nixon and Harding as one of the most corrupt presidents of all time. Now just because I'm pointing out the faults of every president does not mean that all presidents were total garbage. In reality, presidents like FDR, Lincoln, Eisenhower, and Jefferson did lasting acts of good for the country. And I'm also not saying that all presidents are equally fallible. In truth, presidents like Bush Jr., Taylor, Reagan, Nixon, Clinton, and Harding did almost irreparable damage to the country, far more than competent managers like John Quincy Adams, Woodrow Wilson, and the often underestimated Jimmy Carter. But if all presidents are people, and all people are fallible, it seems sensible to me to remain vigilant and critical of all presidents, even the ones you voted for.